today on hands-on photography i'm going through all of my emails and social media messages and tags and things like that because i'm talking about all the feedback that you all have continued to send to me thank you so much for that let's get into it Hands-on Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey folks, I am Ant Pruitt and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. This is the podcast where I like to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and also a better post processor. I don't care if you're a beginner. I don't care if all you have is an iPhone or Galaxy Fold or whatever those fancy phones are these days. You can use these tips that are going to help you take better photographs, create better photographs, and uh, even get down into post-processing and making those images just flat out pop. This is the podcast for you. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Now, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and hit subscribe in whatever podcast app you're listening to with this. Uh, So you can go to Google Play. You can go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts. As a matter of fact, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and a star comments and all of that good stuff. So to push us up uh, so other people can find the show. But if you can't quite figure out the subscription options, just go to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography and you'll see all of the subscription options there as well as all of the previous episodes and the show notes applicable to them all all right so let's go ahead and get into this week's episode okay so this is uh, episode 51 and i wanted to do a bit of feedback Uh, based on the stuff that you all have been watching for the previous episodes. You all have been sending emails to hop at twit.tv. You all have been tagging me on Twitter. You all have been tagging me on Instagram. And it's been absolutely great. I've loved every single bit of it. And I said, I want to do this show to go through some of the feedback that I've been getting from you and follow it up with you. Um, Some things I've already followed up with you off the air. And uh, some things I said, you know what, let's put this on air with your consent, because I think it would be quite helpful for not only the person submitting the feedback or asking the question, but also everybody in this in this community that are just that's just trying to learn something. All right. So let's go ahead and pull up the first email. My first message comes from Edwin. He says, I'm about to finally upgrade my pixel and try to astrophotography. Had a pixel, too. Have you covered this in hop? I haven't gone back through all of the episodes yet. And then in parentheses says, I don't usually do much video podcast, but need it for photo podcasts for sure. Yeah, I definitely get that Edwin. Uh, Edwin is someone that I've met many, many years ago in my smartphone photographers community back on Google plus and a great guy. It's good to see you in this. Um, I'm really honored that you're checking out my show here on Twit. But far as astrophotography, no, I have not gotten into astrophotography. Astrophotography is something that's really, really fun to do um, and it's quite technical. If you don't know what astrophotography is, it's basically setting up a long exposure to be able to see the night sky. And you can also see the Milky Way in the night sky after you do a long exposure by having your shutter speed open a lot longer than you typically would. So, of course, you're required to have a tripod. uh, You're required to have a pretty nice lens. And, um, you know, just it, it takes a lot of technical and a lot of different variables to make it look right. I haven't gotten into it because quite frankly, the summertime here is the best time to do astrophotography here in Northern California. But as you know, during the summertime, things have been a little bit wonky because of the pandemic. A lot of parks have been shut down for your own safety. And then in addition to things either being shut down or just not accessible, um, I had issues with the sky. The sky here has been hazy just about every single night it's really unbelievable i'm just now seeing the stars for the first time about two nights ago 
seriously. Every night when I step outside just to look up, it's always just full of haze, full of clouds, and I miss the stars. And last, not last night, the night before, I was able to look up and just see the Big Dipper and things like that up there pretty clear, and it was just <laughs> quite refreshing. But I will do some astrophotography soon here on the network and just walk through um, how to do this, how to do astrophotography. It's, it's a little technical, but it is quite doable. And if you have a smartphone, it, particularly the Google Pixel line, you have uh, what they call computational photography that would do night sight um, astrophotography. I put that in air quotes. It's not quite the same because it doesn't really leave a long shutter or anything like that. Uh, Google just uses this AI to try to figure out what that particular sky is going to look like at that time of day, at that geolocation, a whole lot of different variables. And it does a nice job. It's not totally perfect, but it does a really nice job considering you're using a tiny little sensor on a smartphone. All right. But yeah, we'll get into astrophotography one day soon. I appreciate you. All right. So let's get into another email. This next one comes from my man, Mr. Terrell C. Woods. Uh, Terrell sent in an email and it says, uh, so up late and found this older picture, which is originally flat as all heck and too bright overall. My goal was to make this into one of those old fashioned hunt pictures. Thanks for the lesson. I would like to see how you would process or change even to make this more compelling. I'm liking this painterly thing. And that's Terrell C. Woods over on Instagram. Yeah, the, the email came in with the subject line painterly effect. That was an episode a few weeks back where we talked about just a simple little trick that you can do inside of Photoshop to make your images just have a bit of a soft painterly looking effect. Now, Mr. Terrell sent me the actual raw file from his Canon camera and he allowed me to play with it. So I pulled it up inside of Lightroom, took a look at it. And my first thought was this thing is a little bit underexposed. I want to brighten it up. And then I later moved it on into Photoshop and did some more touch up in there. I removed a couple of distractions like there was some garbage on the ground and things like that. Uh, then I added some color grading to it because I thought it could use a, a nice touch of color grading. And since we were talking about painterly effect, I did add a bit of the painterly effect to it. Brought it back into Lightroom, cropped it down because I thought cropping it down was going to be a much better image. And voila, here's the image. I think it looks a lot better. Uh, it took out a lot of the extra distractions, put more focus on those uh, annoying geese that I hate so much. <laughs> but I think it works out this way. That's how I would have done it, Mr. Terrell. As usual, I appreciate all of the support that you offer to me and the show here at Twit TV. Thank you for sending that in. Now, we do have one more email that I'd like to go over. But before we do that, I'd like to take a few seconds to thank this week's sponsor. This episode of Hands of Photography is brought to you by LastPass. Now with 25 million users and 70,000 businesses, it's no surprise why they're the award-winning number one password manager. They help you transition your remote workforce. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what from where. LastPass has won eight awards this year. You don't have to just take our word for it. LastPass speaks for itself. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit and we thank LastPass for their support all right so let's go ahead and take a look at this final email this one comes from my man mr richard smith richard actually um tagged me on instagram as well his instagram handle is scooby yeah scooby geek yeah sk O O B Y geek over on Instagram. Make sure you follow him there. But his message goes as follow. Hey, and I just posted a black and white picture on my IG was wondering if you could look at it and give me a few pointers I'm trying to up my iPhone photography game. Thanks. Richard J. Smith in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Hey, thanks for the picture. I'm going to pull this up right now inside a Lightroom. And again, if you ever want to send some photos over for me to critique or try to touch up and do what I would do to them or just offer suggestions and things like that and show it on the show, go ahead and do it. But make sure that you mention to me that I have your consent to show your images on the show. Of course, these fine folks that um, allowed me to show their, show their images on air have already sent me their written consent. Thank you very much. So now let's go ahead and hop into Lightroom and take a look at this image from Mr. Smith. 
Okay, so this is black and white shot with an iPhone, and quite frankly, I don't care what he shot it with. It's a it's a nice photograph. You know, there's a couple things that stands out to me right off the bat, but still, nice work. So let's get started with this. Inside of Lightroom, I'm going to go to my develop module right up here at the top, like we always do. And if you've been watching all of my previous episodes of Hands on Photography, you probably know the first thing that I'm going to nitpick about because it always drives me nuts. That is the good old horizon line. So we're going to start by fixing that horizon because it's slightly off. So we'll do a little bit of a rotation here like so. And see, in my eyes, that's already 200% <laughs> better just with that simple uh, rotation there. But there's still some things that I would consider on this image. It's in black and white. And with black and white, when I look at it from my own personal taste, I like to see deep black levels in it. And I also like to see white levels in there as well, you know, going all the way across the spectrum, if you will. But I still want to be able to see detail in this image. He does have detail because the iPhone does a damn good job of keeping things nice and sharp and crisp. So let's get rid of some of the distractions and the things that don't necessarily add to the image and also try to make sure we can retain the aesthetic of it being black and white and not just monochrome. You know what I'm saying? So good old crop tool again. This over here in the upper left corner looks like another piece of a building that's not doing anything for you. So let's get rid of it. So I'm just going to crop it a little bit more, something like that. I thought it was a little bit distracting and it didn't really help the image. And even more so as I continue to crop, if you look down at the lower left third, right in front of this car, there's a big old highlight there because of the way the shadows have fallen. I don't particularly like that. It may not be anything I can do about that, but if I can eliminate it, I'm going to try to eliminate it. And I think I can do so by just cropping in just a little bit more, something like that. Okay. So now I'll just take a look at it and this looks a lot more balanced. It looks a lot more um, clean. But now the foreground is the problem to me. And again, we talked about it last week on episode 50 with um, our fall photography. Same goes for pretty much any of your street photography or landscape photography. If you could have something that's that has a couple different levels of interest, you have your foreground, you have your middle ground and your background work with it. If you don't have all three, that's fine, because if, if you have something that's just sort of distracting, you don't want to work with that. And right now, if I were to look at the, the fore, middle and background, the foreground is not very compelling. All I have is this bright strip of light right here on the asphalt on the bottom third. And I don't think that's adding to the image. Maybe I can crop most of it out and not all of it. So let's see. So just crop some of that out. We'll stop right about here and just to see what it looks like. Yeah, and that's it's OK, because now when I look at it, it looks more like a little border. I'm not a fan of borders on photographs. That's just my taste. Uh, so let's go ahead and just remove that. OK. Getting better. Yeah, I think that's getting better. So now I want to tackle the aspect of it being black and white. So if I was to go over here to my black slider here in Lightroom, right there where my mouse is. I'm going to pull the black levels down just a touch. Not too much, just a touch, because I still want some detail. OK, so I brought the black levels down to minus 53. And that's really dark. If you look at the histogram, you can see that the blacks are almost spiked. OK, so we don't want to take it too far. So let's bring it back just a little bit. Something like that. Now, let's take a look at the shadow and pull the shadow levels up because that way we'll still be able to see some details in those darker areas. We'll be able to see more details of those vehicles here in the shade. So let's push the shadows up. Just a little, not too much because we still want black, but we want some detail there. And I think we are getting that. Yep. 
I think that looks good. Now, last thing I would do is I would put a vignette on this just to sort of give us a bit more of a bullseye and focal point to draw the viewer's eyes. Um, when you, when I, for me, when I pull up an image on the screen, I, I, I like to notice how my eye falls on the image. If someone posts something on Instagram, I want to know, I, I pay attention to the first thing that I look at when I look at their image. And on this shot, the first thing that I would like to look at is the distance, looking straight down the street. You're standing here in the middle of the street, your camera is pointing straight down the street and off into the distance. So why not just really force my eyes to look that way by eliminating the distractions and just doing something with your post processing to enhance. This is where I need you to look, viewer. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and grab the vignette tool here and just do a little vignette on it to further make us look down the street there. And I think that works a lot better. If anything, consider your cropping. If you're gonna post this on Instagram, my experience is that if you crop to a one to one ratio, uh, it looks better on Instagram because people are looking at it on their phones. You can do the 16 to nine aspect ratio, you know, the wide landscape. That's fine. But I notice a lot more eyeballs pop up on my images when they're in that one to one square crop. Uh, so let's see, I can tell it one to one. And I'll shift it just a little bit something like that there nope that's not quite right shift it a little more this way that's better cool now that's what i would have done with this mr smith what are your thoughts feel free to email me back and let me know how you would proceed based on the little bit of tips that i've just shared with you all right Okay, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all so much for continuing to share your feedback with me, sending those emails, sending those tweets and tags and things like that all over social media. It really does mean a lot. Um, it's nice to know that I'm doing this show and people are watching, people are enjoying it, and people are learning and applying all of these little tips to their photography and watching their skill set just go up, up, up. I really do love seeing that. Continue to share it. Continue to let other folks know about the show and continue to reach out to me. It does mean a lot. All right. So if you have any questions, shoot an email to uh, hop at twit.tv. How is my other show? Hop at twit.tv or just tag me on Twitter. I am ant underscore Pruitt or even on Instagram ant underscore Pruitt. And so until next time, you all safely create and dominate and we'll see you here next time on hands-on photography y'all take care see ya hi i'm jason howell host of all about android each week i'm joined by my co-hosts ron richards and florence ion as well as a whole rotating cast of guests journalists in the android space experts developers and even people working on android behind the scenes at google uh, we talk about everything that has to do with Android, and you don't want to miss a single episode so you know what's going on behind the scenes. That's twit.tv slash AAA. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode.